Swain Event, SwainEvent.com, fueled by Dead End Barbecue. It is Wednesday, live from the Low T Center studio, and joining us on the Irish Network's hotline, man, we brought in a legend today. First time, man, I've been so excited about uh, this interview since uh, we booked it yesterday, and, and uh, man, big fan of, of Ron Slay, um, man, watched him as a player when I was a young pup, and now I'm watching him tear it up, man, on social media. Um, there on 104.5 The Zone in Nashville talking about Tennessee sports, man. It's always a great follow. Give him a follow at Ron Slay 35 Are we going on the sleigh ride today, Ron? Is that what we're doing, man? Good morning. Morning, Swain. It is hump day, and it's only right we go on the sleigh ride. That's how you get over the hump. Let's Jump on the sleigh ride, let it do its power thing that it does, and we'll get you there. Let's do it, man. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it, man. Um, Ron, one of the most, you know, <laughs> difficult things to do, man, is, is talk about the team that you love, the team that you play for uh, when you're in this role. And it's really uh-huh. easy. Two years ago, man, we had a – boy, we had a good time. Ball Nation <laughs> had a definitely. good time, man, beating teams down, Grant Admiral chomping, uh, you know, on the road versus the Gators. You know, uh-huh. one fly, we all fly. Uh, just had a really good time. And I know you had a good time, man. I, you were – Making videos, leaving Vanderbilt's <laughs> arena, uh, you know, just just having a good time. Well, there's there's high times and there's you know there's low times, and you know this is a talented basketball team, but we can we can we can agree that you know we thought this team would be a whole lot better. Ron, what mm-hmm. what is it from your point of view? What why are we at this place? Man, honestly, Swain, there's so many different layers, man, to try to unpack with this team, man, but. If I could pinpoint one thing, I think it was, I would say um, the physicality, uh, physicality, um, and, and and the focus. You know, it's um, it's a young group. Um, you don't necessarily have that vocal leader, you know, uh, stepping up and trying to guide these groups outside of the coaching staff. You know, you always got to have that one guy as far as um, if it's a player to kind of be a carbon copy of the coach and be able to get across to the players what you want to be done. Physicality aspect, you see it in the rebounding, you know, um, getting out rebounded. The games we do a better job rebounding, we usually win those games. You see it from the point of guys being able to penetrate and guys trying to reach in with their arms. You see, like in the Kansas game, when they put a body right there, it's a little different. And it's caused by a little effort, a little extra effort and a little extra energy in order to um, in order to do those things. So it's a lot of things, man, you know, individually that they could be doing better. But collectively as a unit, those, those are the two things I would point out, man. The focus, staying focused. Over the course of the game, you know that way you don't have these roller coaster rides that we're we're on, and we we keep being at the top with our hands up in the air, ready to come down and screaming. And instead, we we can get off the ride and you know go to another ride and kind of know what's coming. But not with this team right now. So somehow we gotta we gotta fix that. Getting ready to go in this SEC tournament, man. And hopefully this is a good week of practice leading into the Florida game. Ron Slay here on the Swain event. Uh, Ron, I was we was watching the um, the game where Keon Johnson you know, baptized a Georgia player, dunked on him. Yeah. It, was, it was it was ESPN, you know, top ten. Um, and Ron, you shared a dunk that you had in your playing days against Georgia, and you made that gentleman your son. Um, that that night, man. Why why you do that poor boy like that, man? And then you looked over him. How did you not get a technical foul for this, man? This is hey, man. this is dirty. Swain, that's what I don't understand, dude. I don't know how they didn't I don't know how and after the dunk, Jim Herrick, who is the coach of Georgia, called a timeout. Why he called a timeout, I have no earthly idea because my emotions are running high and that just gave me time to celebrate and that was just the celebration was the football guy in me. You know, I I'm a big fan of football, man, and it was like a it was like a, a, a linebacker getting a big hit, man. You just start celebrating and stomping in front of their bench and talking. 
How I didn't get thrown out, I have no earthly idea, man. Are you still paying but. child support payments for dunking on that <laughs> kid like that? <laughs> <laughs> you made him your son that day. Hey, man, it, it, it get a little rough. It get a little rough, man. I, mean, I, I got a. I got some back pay due, man, but I'm going to try to get it on in the mail to him. Make sure everything's taken care of. <laughs> you look at your check and go, wait a minute. I just took it out, huh? Exactly, they just took it out man. automatically, man. I know I shouldn't duck on that kid like that, man. <laughs> man, hey, man, it was wild, man. But I will tell you, though, to clear it up, man, I know a lot of people are like, man, why would he post that? If people were watching the game, they heard Jimmy Dyke say, Vol Twitter, you know, quite often. Mm-hmm. Of all Twitter, if it's a dunk out there that you've seen in Tennessee basketball history, feel free to send it in. So I don't know if he thought I wasn't watching or what, but <laughs> I sent my dunk in, and, and you know it kind of took on a life of his own after, man. But yeah, man, it is it, it, it was fun, man. It was fun. I wish we can get back to those times two weeks ago and. <laughs> kind of pick it back up, but we'll see how it goes, man. Uh, Ron, you talk about being physical, man, the physicality. Uh, you spoke mm-hmm. about focus, leadership. Um, so I did some research, my friend. Um, your last year at Tennessee, man, you, you shot 193 free throws. You made a 151. Uh, you know, I ain't got time to do any math. A lot of percentages. It was good. Uh, <laughs> people just need to know that. Uh, you wouldn't mind ripping through someone's face to get to the rim. Uh, if that's Without what it doubt. took, right? Uh, Without a doubt. This is going to hurt me when I say this, man. Uh, <sighs> take it easy on me, Frank. Uh, e Pons has shot 28 free throws this whole season. God. 28 free throws. Yeah, so, hey, bro, he, like, I, like you, I, would, I would give my left toe <laughs> to, to be built <laughs> like, Ponds, man. You know how many times I go to the beach and take my shirt off, man. <laughs> man. I wouldn't. Hey, I would be like uh, R.J. Uh, J.R. Smith after they yeah. won the title. I never have a shirt on. Yeah, yeah, Swain. I'm, I'm gonna be honest. I give all mine to the Goodwill. Man. They can have every single shirt. I just, I would never own a shirt if it's cold. I'm walking around chill bumps, nipples hard. It don't even matter. With this, that nope. specimen of a body that he has, man. That, you kind of hurt me with this, Wayne. I, I never did that research on that, man, and I, I'm, I see why I didn't, but, y'all. It, it hurt, it hurt 28 me. free throws? T- yeah, tw- 28 on the year, man, 22 for 28. And so, like, I like I like our team, man. I Like, I mm-hmm. like them. So, I like, I hate to bring that stat up, but, like, I think it explains the lack of physicality and the lack of uh, maybe dog that we that – we, mm-hmm. that we, you know, or or shy of in some areas, but man, I just feel like a guy like that should be getting to the free throw line ten plus times a game because he's trying to rip the rim off every time he gets the ball in the paint. I like the fadeaway, yes. but I like the, I like yep. the dunks better. I like the I like the you know the and ones and free throw attempts a little bit better. Right, right, and that's that's the thing, Swain. Like you see how aggressive he is on the defensive end as far as it is, it goes to protecting the rim, but. When when that doesn't translate to offense, man, it, it's different, man. And that's what I think the staff, coaching staff, is is harping on as far as having an inside presence. It's not just to have a guy down there scoring, but it's also to help your team get in the bonus. Like, you got some guys that can close out. This is a terrific free throw shooter. You got Jaden Spring who can shoot it. Victor Bailey Jr., the list goes on. Like, if you can get these guys to the line and we get in the bonus, you know, that helps. That helps a bit. So, I, I, that's unbelievable, man. I, I wish, you know, that in that off season, you know, I think a lot was put on him by outside sources, mm-hmm. probably to work on his perimeter game, show him you can handle the ball a little bit, tell him you can shoot the three, and maybe that's taken away from his physicality. But um, one thing for sure, I always broke down how I was going to score, you know what I mean? Because my individual success, you know, that translated to the team success too. It wasn't like I was putting myself first or anything. It was just, man, in order for us to be good, I need to be able to do this on a consistent basis, knowing Mm -hmm. I'm going to carry a load. So I always said I had to get at least six to seven free throws a game. Sometimes it might be 13, sometimes it might be four. But if I aim for six or seven, I know I can get there and knock it down. And that's not going. That's not necessarily me having the ball. 
That's him jockeying for post position. That's him going for offensive rebounds. That's him boxing out where guys come over his back. All of those are fouls, man, that can send you to send you to the line. So, I mean, it's, it's it's that's tough. That's tough to hear, man. And maybe that's that's a reason why he's off. Yeah. Because also at the free throw line, you're able to get a rhythm. You're able to see the ball go into the basket, and you catch a rhythm in that way. So, man, that 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 is rough to see, man. He's supposed to be going through people's chin. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, pump fake go dead through their chin, man, and they're supposed to be missing teeth when they be battling the East. Yeah, that's what I, that's what I. Uh... That's what I expect, man, from a guy that's built like him, man. Right. Um, Ron, who, who, who's a guy on this team that you've been impressed with, you know, this season? Man, maybe someone that, you know, that, that, that you know, your spirit animal. I don't know, man, but you know, mm-hmm. give me well, you know, I, one of those guys on the team. I, I'm, 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 I'm impressed with Josiah Jordan James, you know, with him fighting through the injury. When he's on the floor, you can kind of see, uh, well, especially when he's on the floor and healthy. You can kind of see him be able to pull teams together and him be the glue to keep everybody um, going in one direction. Um, I'm impressed also by the freshmen. You know, I wish we would have been able to see them have a preseason. Mm. And I think this this output that we're seeing from them now, we would have saw a little early. You know, maybe a week within or uh, two weeks within the SEC play. But it's good that it's coming on now because – Maybe this can this can turn things around for us. So um, things. I, I, I'm also I was also impressed overall with the team as far as it goes with communicating. Like that was huge early in the season, and I was asking a guy, man, uh, in the media that was able to go to the games. Have you been able to hear the team communicating like? They are. You know, with the fans not being there, when we were watching the games early in the season, guys were communicating. You could hear it on the TV screen. It was like, oh, my gosh, this mm-hmm. is it. Mm-hmm. Like, this team buying in like this defensively, communicating, flying around, this is this travels. We all know in, in basketball, our football, defense travels. And you can get games won like that. I haven't been, I've been, I haven't been hearing that lately. And I asked a, a, part, uh, a guy in the media, could he hear it when he was going to the games? He said he really didn't hear a change in it. But I no longer hear it on TV. Now, I don't know if that's the TV um, drowning it out with the sound or whatever, but I no longer hear the communication like you could once before. And that's disturbing, knowing that this is what they were hanging their hat on. Now, in the stats, they're still top 10 in the nation in defense. But from the eye test, it's not quite there. When guys beating you off the dribble and the help side's not there, you're not recovering to your guy, you're not making extra effort rotations. It's all a little different, man. And to me, to me, Swain, I know this is a little, a little off, a little, a little off, but <clears throat> from the question you asked, but it's got to mean something. And I know, and I'm not saying mean something like we know deep down these guys want to win. All of them are competitive. All of them have competitive spirit. All of them would do whatever it takes to win. But to me, man, watching the game, it has to mean something. Meaning, you got to be excited. You got to have fun. Now, it's hard to have fun when you're losing. But that's when you got to be able to hit that different switch. And yeah, the COVID is is putting a damper on team bonding and Mm -hmm. the fans not being there. That's the extra energy and the extra motivation that you need to get you over the hump, especially in these dog days Mm -hmm. of the SEC. But somehow, some way, man, they live by the moniker, it's not about me. If nothing else, man, do it so your brother don't suffer. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. I can't let I can't let Swain struggle and me not hurt from that. Forget me. Let me pick him up somehow, get him going somehow. Whether it's a uh, extra pass, whether it's I get a steal and I see you trailing, I stop and don't get the points, I pitch it back to you to get you going, to get you a layup, like something, man. I You you, you almost got to overdo it. You know what I'm saying? So, man, that, but I'm, I'm impressed to answer your question. I'm impressed by a lot of things, most definitely the freshman and most definitely Josiah Jordan James as far as being the glue. Ron, Tennessee doesn't play for, for eight days going from the Auburn game 
to the Florida game, Saturday to Sunday, eight eight days in between. Do you think that's a good thing or, or a bad thing in the sense of do you think this team needs to play a midweek game because it's been slumping, or do you think a week off will be good for them? I think a week off will be great for them. They get to get healthy. They get to get in the lab, and they get to practice. You get to bump and grind. You get to find yourself. And if it's somehow we can do spirit transfers, Somehow you can go like like people do heart heart transplants and stuff like that. If we can do spirit transplants through this week, I think I think we'll be on the right track. If we can get them positive, good spirits back in those guys and they back to having fun, all this to turn around, man. They gotta have fun though, man. You gotta see the life in them, and I think you're able to find that through practice. Like the games are so quick of a turnaround, and you get in the game, and you know. Um, with with three days um, before the game, you got a rest day where you get healthy. You got one day of practice. Then you got film. Then you got to wind down and go straight into the game. Instead, you get to let the guys heal, do some film study, get in there, bump and grind, get shots up. You know, try to change the the course of things. And I think this week off, man, is great, man. Especially knowing that Florida did you the way they did you last mm. time. Like uh, if if it's nothing else that gets you up to play this game. <clears throat> it's that it's senior night, and it's Sunday. You're on, you'll be the only SEC game on. The third thing is they humiliated you on national TV without three of their top players. It's bad. Now, if if, if <laughs> hey man, listen, if that don't get you ready to play, you don't want some of that. And it's Florida on top of that? No, nah, man. You, you, you're, in the, you're, in, you're, you're at the wrong school. Damn, being at the wrong sport. You're in the wrong school. If you won't take it to Florida, like you're supposed to take it to them. The Gator Chomp is real. When Grant Williams and them were doing that, it was real. It meant something. Mm. It's supposed to mean the same thing, y'all. You, you know what happened, man? Grant, Grant Williams wrote a check that this team has to cash because yeah. you don't you don't think that those Florida Gators, even though some of those guys are not on that team and some mm-hmm. of the guys that are on our team wasn't on that team two years ago, when you do something like that, when you put the flag midfield or when you, you know, yep. cl- you know, do the gator chomp to that fan, they're gonna use that as motivation. And so we should have we should have expected them to to play like that and play with that with that fire and that desire. Um, and it looks like we 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 wasn't expecting it, you know, because they had mm-hmm. a couple guys out. But man, you better understand that they're gonna come in here and try to do the same thing. They might try to do it worse. Swain, right, man, listen, you totally right. <clears throat> you totally right. And I'm gonna tell you what, man. When those games come around, that's the good thing about SEC. Those games come around, you don't need no motiv- motivation. Like I, I never, I Tennessee football could y'all could have went and played Florida with an empty stadium. And they've been just as nasty. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? On the basketball court, it's the same exact thing. Before they let the fans in, I remember my freshman year when they had Mike Miller, Donnell Harvey, Donis Haslam, oh. Brent Nelson. They were rolling. They went to the Final Four that year. Oh. We had just beat them in double overtime in the Swamp earlier that year. They came up to Knoxville. And before they let the fans in, guys were outside. Uh, um, um, the players were out there warming up on the court. Donnell Harvey took it upon himself to come down to our end, Mm -mm. grab a ball, and walk towards the other end like that was going to fly. Man, me and Hathaway and C.J. Black went right there to half court, man, met him immediately. Man, give us that ball, man. And whatever y'all want to do, we can do it right now. We don't need no fans here, no officials, no coaches. Man, it's home. It means something different, Swain. Yeah. And that's what we got to see out of these guys. Yeah. Uh, Ron, I ain't going to hold you up, man. I know, golly, it's already 940, man. I wish we could have you on even longer, man. Cause, <laughs> hey, man, you got my number. Anytime you man. need me, Swain, I'm here for you, baby. Man. So we can run it. Yeah, can man. Run it. It's good to hear from you. Uh, let me ask you this, man. Last question on the way out. Who's the best college basketball team in the country and who you think will win it? So, best right now doesn't <clears throat> necessarily mean that the, they're going to win it. Without a crap, without a so, doubt. So, who you think is the best right now and who you think will win it? I think uh, the best team right now is Gonzaga. You know what I mean? They they 
even though their conference play isn't one to test them much, it's just you can see it, man. You can see the execution. You can see them playing together. You can see them having all the pieces, the inside threat. They got a great shooter. They got two great point guards. Mm-hmm. Um, man, they, they, and they got a great coach, you know what I mean? And they've been together before. You know, I like Baylor also, even though with them losing to West Virginia, um, Baylor's a really good team. Uh, Dark Horse, I'm a, I'm a one I'm one that believes, you know, a, a guy can get hot and carry a team to the Final Four. And I'm a very, very impressed with Kate Cunningham at Oklahoma State. Yeah. He's a guy that can get it done. Luca Garza for hours, he can get it done. You know, I really love the big men, so you got to give him some props. Illinois is a good team. You know, yeah. um, SEC. Um, it just depends, man. I, I'm not. I, I I really like Alabama. What they've been doing, I'm a believer in them. I just don't think when you got to depend on three point shooting, it can carry you that far yeah. if the game slows down. So, um, yeah, man. If I got to pick one to win it, I'm I'm gonna have to go with the favorite, and I have to go with Gonzaga, man. They 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 just look well well oiled right now. And if Mark Few can't get it done this year, I doubt he'll ever be able to get it done. Uh, that's good to know. That's how I feel like my bracket this year, man. I'm, a, I'm, 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 I'm filling it out with your advice uh, in mind, Ron. We got to get you back in here, man. You, uh, you, you, you're on 104.5, man. You're making appearances there, man. You're doing a heck of a job. Uh, I encourage everybody to follow uh, follow you on Twitter, at Ron Slay 35 And, and uh, when you make your appearances on 104.5, man, people tap in, tune in, uh, because you do a great job, man. I really appreciate you joining us this morning. I appreciate that, Swain. Appreciate y'all having me, man. Y'all, y'all be on the lookout for them Lady Vols too, man. Gonna get this double by, gonna spank South Carolina in the SEC semifinal, and then be in the SEC championship. So let's do it. Supporting all of them. That's right. That's right. All right, Ron. Yeah. Thanks for your time, right, man. Swain. Appreciate you. Appreciate it, man. Thanks. No